Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life, also known as I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. And this is episode number... 135. And that is the voice of Megan Hibbard. Uh, my co-host for this wildly popular podcast. You fired up on this Monday? Fired up. Episode number 135. Those are the first three odd numbers of the numerical scale. One, three, and five. Isn't that awesome? One, three, five. And it's releasing on two, one of 21. We're super excited about it. I hope that your money's going great. You you are fired up? Yes. That's awesome. Always. We got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about feelings. Isn't that awesome? Tell everybody what we're talking yes, about. Yes, it's going to get all emotional on you. Oh, Okay, likes. so the title is The Heart and Money Connection. So our question for today is, have you ever wondered why we humans are so emotional about money? If so, you're in luck because today's episode, we're going to be talking about why we humans have so many feelings about money, joy, sadness, anger, frustration, humiliation, fear, jubilation. How oh, you don't hear that word very often. Jubilation. Yeah. Hope, despair, exhaustion. These are all just a few of the feelings that most humans have experienced during their money journey. So today we're going to be talking about this fascinating topic. So get ready to get in touch with your feelings. Yes. And so this is going to be less of the how to step one, two, three, four. And we're going to recognize our feelings. It's going to be awesome. But first, we're going to go to one of my favorite segments. What is that? The current money events. You didn't sing it. Let's go. <laughs> now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. This portion of the podcast is brought to you by 2020 Money, Gain Clarity for Your Financial Future. Do you feel stuck when you think about trying to fund your dreams? Well, help has arrived. Order 2020 Money at iwbnin.com slash 2020, and you'll soon be on your way to fully funding the biggest dreams of your life. Well, that's awesome. And that book is super helpful in clarifying your calling, the things you're passionate about, and be able to fund your biggest dreams of your life. And then it shows you the connection to your money to make sure that that money does support it. Uh, today's current money event section is about the United States national debt. It is up. Did you know that? Yes. It's went up. <laughs> uh, they've been printing checks. Everybody's been getting checks with the COVID-19 CARES Act. And I don't even know what, I, there's so many acts now. Money uh, just starts showing so yeah, up so now. PPP round <laughs> two came out and they also had more checks. By the time this is out, they're probably going to be approved Another more checks. checks. Yeah. How are they funding these checks? They're just printing. They're printing money, which is <laughs> debt. We're currently at $27.8 trillion of debt and counting. It's going to be higher when you get this episode of the podcast because we didn't release it in the three seconds after we recorded it, so it's going to be higher. That re translates to $84,082 per U.S. citizen. So your son, he's one. Yes. He already has $84,000 of debt. That's unbelievable. Welcome Every to U.S. citizen. Yep. Yes. Per taxpaying citizen, because Logan doesn't pay taxes yet, mm -hmm. although he should be like a child model and getting money. <laughs> um, he doesn't have income as far as I know so far. Mm -hmm. So per taxpaying U.S. citizen, it's $222,191. 222191 Remember, uh, most U.S. citizens, you know, they don't, a lot of them don't pay taxes. So it's borne by the taxpayers. And if you retire and you're no longer, or you're paying very few taxes, well, guess what? Those that are working are carrying a bigger burden. And I want to help everybody who's listening to this podcast figure out things that you can do right now to help address this nonsense, this debt. The first thing that you can do is to make wise personal financial decisions. Work within the bounds of a balanced budget. This is so important because here's what I want to just say. I've said it a lot. We have the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. and uh, that's in Congress. And they are merely representative of those who elected them. And if we have the majority of people electing these officials, if the majority of them are following a budget and living within their means and recognizing the importance of having reduced debt, they will elect people who represent them. But guess what? Surprise, surprise. This is going to shock you. You might want to guard yourself. You're driving the car. I want to pull over, park. You know, Megan's going to stabilize herself right now. She's going to feel like there's an earthquake. But newsflash, most people are not living within their means. 
70% of them are living paycheck to paycheck. When faced with a bill of unexpected bill, $400, the Federal Reserve recently did a study that more than 40% of people could not pay for it. Just $400. And that was pre-COVID. So you imagine how bad it is now. The best thing you can do to help the national debt, seems weird, is to live within a balanced budget your own life and have very little or no debt. The second thing you can do is as you're living that way is to work with your community, city, and state officials to help them operate within the bounds of a balanced budget. That's right. You may need to run for mayor. You may need to run for governor. You may need to run for state senator. You may need to run for these county council and city council positions to ensure that they operate within the bounds of a balanced budget. Now, Megan and I both are residents of the state of South Carolina. South Carolina has a balanced budget. We live in the county where our worldwide headquarters are associated, Anderson County, mm -hmm. which operates with a balanced budget that does not spend more than comes in. That is a blessing. Yeah. What is happening with our economy in our local area? It is exploding. Mm -hmm. Is it any wonder that where there are economies that live with balanced budgets, that they're able to invite other businesses in. They're able to grow their economies. And then, of course, the third thing you can do after you live and operate within the bounds of a balanced budget and you work with your community, city, and state officials and even run for those offices so that you can ensure that budgets are ran and adhered to, then you need to contact your elected national representatives, both in both parts of Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate and the President and demand that they prepare and follow a balanced budget. Now, there's one thing uh, that is important, that is to prepare a budget, but it's also important to follow it. Mm -hmm. That's really important. And they have not done that for pretty much this whole millennia. Since year 2000, we have not lived, most, most presidents haven't even submitted a budget. We haven't even really had a budget that is approved that balances since like the mid early 2000s. Ever since then, we just spend money and keep passing these spending bills and keep running up more debt and more debt. And so yours truly, Joe Sangle, humbly at your service at the Monday Money Tip Podcast, I have sent an email to the speaker, Nancy Pelosi. I have sent it to the previous majority leader, Mitch McConnell, the new majority leader, Representative Schumer. I have sent letters to my elected senators of the state of South Carolina, the Honorable Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott. And I have emailed President Donald Trump. By the time this podcast goes out, I will have emailed President Joseph R. Biden <laughs> and will let them know that it is my expectation as a duly elected representative of this nation that they should prepare a budget and follow it. And that's three things you can do. Live it in your own life, Drive for change if it's not in your current community to live within a budget. And if it is live within a budget, you know, encourage them in that. And then contact your elected national representatives. You have a voice. Use it. And that's three things you can do right now to start to turn the tide against this. Listen, we're all going to have to pay it back. The sooner we get after this, the cheaper and the easier it is going to be for us to handle it and manage it. So that's it for today's current money events section. Get fired up. Yes, that was fired up. Okay, so for our success story today, it comes from Billy. And Billy said, um, my wife Renee and I paid off $64,000 in 30 months. Woo! Yes, $64,000 in 30 months. That's over so, two grand a month. Yeah. So we just sent off the final credit card payment yesterday. Thanks for your encouragement when you vis visited our church. And he is from Believer's Church in Virginia. And the leadership in your books. And he says, woo! <laughs> that, 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 I'm pretty sure he didn't say it that way, but that was funny. <laughs> Woo! That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Let the dreaming begin. And that's from Billy. That's really exciting. I mean, and, and it's a 30-month journey. That's two and a half years. And, and we always say when we're teaching that part of the ladder uh, of achieving non-house, non-business debt, which is rung four of the I was broke, now I'm not ladder, um, of course, people can get a copy of the ladder. I was broke down, com slash ladder. But here's, here's what we always encourage them is it takes 12 to 36 months to become debt free, except for the house. Most people stare at me like that is not possible. Right. But then 
people like Billy email me and prove that it is possible. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we know is they free up on average $750 to $1,500 a month in take-home pay payments. And now the reason Billy said, let the dreaming begin and said, woo, with at least 26 O's in the word woo, <laughs> is because 64 grand is gone, over two grand a month has now been freed up. And now they can really start funding some big time dreams. And so thank you, Billy, for emailing that into us, letting us know about your success. It has inspired us. It inspires others. And this podcast runs on your success. Thanks so much for sharing it. Yes. Fired up. Awesome. Okay. So if you have a success story that you want to share with us, make sure you email that in. You can email it at info at IWBNIN.com. And we would love to sponsor your story on the podcast. But we're going to talk about our featured resource for this Yes. Month. Can I talk about it? Are you stealing my thunder? I'm so fired up. Yeah, go well, for it. Well, you can tell everybody what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, you can go for it. It is Fully Funded Life. Check it out at fullyfunded.life. I'm telling you right now, we're so excited. A little over two weeks ago, we launched uh, this membership community. And it's really four things. If you're asking me what Fully Funded Life is, it's four things. It is classes, it's courses, which give you education so that you, you know, you have to have education and win with money. So it's courses, and then it's challenges. Uh, you've heard us talk about budget challenges. You've heard us talk about saving challenges and other challenges that we've helped lead. It's where you have quick burst of focused energy on improving one area of your financial journey. So it's, it's courses, it's challenges where you get to go with a lot of like-minded people and make rapid progress. And then it's coaching. So you get coaching from myself and from other members of our coaching team, all of them certified by I was broke, now I'm not, to help you with your money questions on demand when you need it. And that's available to all members. And then the fourth thing that is available to you is it allows you to have community. And community is so important because we can't do this alone. We always quote this verse from the Bible, Proverbs 15, 22, that says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. You need Council. And so fully funded dot life is all about that. It's helping you win with money with like minded people so that you can have ongoing access to coaching, whether you're not getting a sales pitch. Trust us, we're not going to be selling you any insurance policy, no investments. We might offer you one of our books at a really, really deep discount. But more than that, we are committed to your success. I urge you to check it out today at fullyfunded.life. I think you'll be so glad you did it. We know that your bank account will be. Get fired up. <laughs> okay. So for our main section for today, we're going to talk about talk emotions and that kind of stuff. So our topic for today, I'll just read it again, is have you ever wondered why we humans are so emotional about money? If so, you're in luck because in today's episode, we're going to be talking about why we humans have so many feelings about money. Joy, sadness, anger, frustration, humiliation, fear, jubilation. This is a really hard word to say. Jubilation, hope, despair, exhaustion. These are just a few of the feelings that most humans have experienced during their money journey. So today we're going to talk about this fascinating topic. So get ready to get in touch with your feelings. Well, this is a great question because we all do experience emotions with money. Um, have you ever been emotional about your money, Megan? Yes. So I was thinking about this topic and I think... It's hard, like, especially, I know I talk about it a lot, but I'm a saver. And so I think for me, it's hard when I like save up a lot of money, even if it's for a specific thing, and then you go to do that thing and you have to break up with the money. That's really hard. It's hard when you're paying a bill and you know you owe that money, you know you owe the power company the money, or you know you owe, you know, the char like charter, I hate paying charter for internet, you know, like it's spectrum, now. spectrum, yes, charter spectrum, whatever. <laughs> but like, you know, you owe these people the money or a hospital bill or whatever it is, but yet it's still, at least for me, comes with all these emotions that you're like, huh, it's really interesting that I'm feeling that right now because I know I owe this because I, you know, consumed their service or whatever it is, but yet it still comes with like the, the heat wave of like, mm. but I don't want to pay it. <laughs> or I, you know, like that's a neat way of describing it. A yeah. heat wave. So which is, which is your face flushes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an emotion. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, do you have any stories, other particular stories that you want to share? Like, like of a moment where you've gotten really emotional about money? Um, I mean, I think, or is it just something that happens every month when Spectrum sends you a bill? Well, I make Jordan pay that one just cause I can't, <laughs> <laughs> like, they just charge so much for internet. Anyways. Um, I, I feel like 
a lot of times we save up. So the biggest thing, I know we talked about the boat, but that was a big thing that we saved for. It was, you know, months and months and months of saving. And then all of a sudden we had to break up with the money. And yeah, we got this great thing that our family loves, especially during quarantine. We were able to have lots of family time out on the boat. We were able to enjoy time together. Like, um, Absolutely. we've been able to like bless our family and that kind of stuff. But in that moment, when you have to make that choice of, okay, am I going to do this? Am I not yeah. going to do this? And, and, and it's, it's like the, that the moment. scarcity, all yeah. those feelings show up. And I remember experiencing this one, one Christmas, every Christmas, there, there was a lot of kids, um, in our family, you know, I have five brothers. So there are six in our family. My mother had two brothers and one of them, my mother had six kids the, her brother had five and the other brother had four and we'd get together every Christmas. That's 15 kids. And so my grand grandparents would show up and my aunts and uncles would show up and, you know, it's hard to pick out specific gifts for all of them. So they gave us our favorite gift, gift which was money. <laughs> and our aunts and uncles would give us two $1 bills. And my grandparents were obviously wealthy. They gave each of us a $5 bill, brand new. <laughs> so I had like $7. And then I'd gotten some more money. And then an older brother of mine had come back for Christmas and he had broken one of my stompers. I don't know if anybody remembers stomper trucks, but it was awesome. And I, I don't know what happened to those. I bet you can get some. I'd love them. But anyhow, I had like $38 saved up. I was wealthy beyond measure. I had the feelings of plenteousness. I had the feelings of wealth, um, pride in that I had money. And we went to take my brother to the airport to fly back home. And back then, you could, as a family, go with them to the gate and wait with them till their flight left. I don't know if you ever remember this. Yeah, wow. Pre- you know, Pre September 11th. Yeah. And, and so we went there and you would go through this basic security, but you're back there and he wanted a newspaper. This is old back then when you had a newspaper and I'm like, man, I am wealthy. I can do this. And I'd gotten a uh, Velcro wallet for Christmas. And, you know, it was one of those that announced to everyone that you had money. You'd tear <laughs> it open and it'd go, you know, that's how the sound exactly like that sound I just made. Yeah, and, uh, and I went and put some coins in there and bought like a USA Today. And, and I put my wallet on top of the newspaper stand. And of course, you know what happened. Mm. I walked away with the newspaper and accidentally left my wallet there. And I discovered that I didn't have my wallet about 15 minutes later. And I raced back in a panic. Nope. And my wallet was there. It was there? On the floor. But the money was uh, missing. They didn't want your wallet. They and I have never money. felt such deep despair, sadness, utter poverty. I've I've lost thousands of dollars on stock and inve the investments I've made. You know, I've we've made different attempts with I was broke that have lost money. I've never felt the poverty that I felt at that moment. Mm. And so I just wanted to just share some, that feeling because even as a kid, that feeling I felt, I still feel it today at the age of 46. Yeah. And whatever has happened in the past with you and with your parents and how you were raised with money and your relationship with money, it affects you. And so as we talk about this, why we feel emotions about money, the first thing I just wanted to share is, it's because money, it is connected to our dreams. Money, it's absolutely connected to your dreams. You cannot disconnect it. it either directly or indirectly, Money or the lack of it has an impact on your ability to accomplish your dreams. And this is why we call this stuff fully funded life around here. Because we know that life costs money and you need money to accomplish it. And most of us have common dreams. Uh, most of us want to be able to have a nice place to live. Most of us have the dream of home ownership. Uh, we want to attend college. Uh, we want to help our kids or grandkids with college. We, so many people want to be stay-at-home parents. Um, we want to go on vacation. We love giving things to those that we love. And when we don't see ourselves making progress towards a dream or we're stuck, or even worse, we re see ourselves regressing, like when we lose a job or lose income or have our wallet opened and stolen, we lose heart. And, but when we see great advancements in achieving dream, we get fired up. We're all happy. Hmm. So money is connected to our dreams. And that is the big problem is, you know, 70% of people live paycheck to paycheck. Hmm. And I wonder if you're listening to this podcast, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, maybe this is why you feel these feelings of frustration or despair. 
is because you need to recognize it's not about the money so much as what dreams aren't going to come true, that fully funded life you're not going to be able to achieve if you're not winning with your money. And that's a big deal. Um, the, do you have anything you wanted to share with that? Well, I'm just like, I was just thinking like one of our big dreams was to be able to have a bigger house so we could host more people over and then COVID happened, but whatever. <laughs> um, but we still, we have the house now, like we just got it this year and it's been like the biggest blessing um, for us and like the joy that comes with that of being able to like save up and have the means to be able to make that move when the right house came available was like a huge deal for us. And it wasn't because, um, you know, we're awesome or anything like that. Like it was because we were diligent in yeah. the years and, and like, you're living a fully funded life. Yeah. Like we worked really hard for it. You know, like the, the things just didn't come natural. Like mm. we had to work for them. Um, you know, and it required discipline. It required sacrifice. It required us saying no to things that our friends are doing, or it required us to just live a little bit of a different life. But in that, I really feel like Jordan and I are in a season of like blessing from it of, Mm. you know, the Lord, like pouring out blessing on us, whether it's, you know, the house or, you know, different like non-financial things, but just because we're diligent and we like work hard at it, you know, we prioritize tithing and we like end of year gifts and all that kind of stuff. And it's not, oh, look at us. We're so awesome because that's not the case at all, but it's, we, we've worked hard and we're reaping some of the benefits of it now, which is like a really cool moment and season to be in. So that, that leads to the, really the second reason why we're emotional that I wanted to share. And that is that money is connected to our heart. What you just heard Megan describe really was from the heart. That, that money is connected to the heart and because dreams are being accomplished, her money has been able to flow to the dreams. And that leads to a heart of happiness, to yeah. joy, to to deep satisfaction of having set a goal, saved for it, been diligent, fought off the challenges and having Mm -hmm. achieved it. And you know, the words of Jesus found in Matthew 6, 24 says, for where your treasure is, there your what? Heart. Heart will be also. You can't disconnect it. He's stating a fundamental fact of our created being. And this is one reason why we love our children so much. How much do you love Logan, Megan? A lot. Yeah, a lot. A lot, a lot. with everything that is in you. Yeah, it hurts sometimes. And that which our heart (laughs) loves will receive our attention. It will receive our affection. And as we've seen on Zoom calls, right? (laughs) It receives your attention. It receives your affection. (laughs) He loves to pop in. (laughs) it receives our money. Yep. You know, in a fascinating article written by a psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, Prudy Gorgushan, I hope I pronounced it, Gorgushan? Yeah. Gorgushan. Gorgushan sounds better. And published in Forbes, here are some key things she shared. She shared... The most important emotions in relation to money are fear, guilt, shame, and envy. Hmm. So let's list those again. Fear, guilt, shame, and envy. It's worth spending some effort to become aware of the emotions that are especially tied to money for you because without awareness, they will tend to override rational thinking and drive your actions. Hmm. Think about that. Hmm. They will override rational thinking and drive your actions. Not even thinking about it. And my, my thing that I say is, I call this stuff money wounds. Another statement that she shared is that shame is one of the most common and powerful emotions associated with money and personal finance. It is a prime reason people avoid doing what they know they should. It's natural to want to avoid exposure in a relation to something you're ashamed about. And so here are just some of the possible versions of shameful feelings that I've seen people experience related to money, and I've experienced many of them. One of them is, I don't have enough money, or I've avoided thinking about finances. Um, I've avoided doing what I'm supposed to do about finances, such as creating a safety net, planning for retirement, sensible budgeting. I'm really ignorant about all of this. That's a terrible feeling. I spend too much. I buy stuff when I'm unhappy. And she shares this, that this is how it unfolds. This is from a psychiatrist, psychoanalyst focused on financial behaviors. Really incredible. She says, you're thinking about sitting down and taking a hard look at your financial situation and creating a realistic financial plan. Many people have been there. But just thinking about it makes your anxiety level rise. Think about this. Is that true for you, podcast listeners? Because you're afraid you will not be able to face the reality that, for example, you have nowhere near enough saved for your kid's education. And that anxiety 
leads to avoidance. You postpone the task and distract yourself. At that moment, your anxiety level immediately drops, giving you positive reinforcement for the avoidance. You repeat this cycle over and over, but each immediate drop in anxiety doesn't quite bring you back to the previous baseline level of distress. And over time, your overall level of anxiety increases and increases. And then she shares the value of actually confronting it. She says, contrast this pattern with confronting the dreaded task of budgeting, of facing your kid's college savings, of your retirement savings, of investing in stocks, whatever it might be. As you face the facts, your anxiety temporarily increases. So you should prepare for that. If you stay with it, however, the overall level of anxiety will steadily decline. You have to tolerate that short-term increase in stress. Watch this. The, short, the short-term increase in distress to benefit from the long-term decrease in anxiety. So you have to tolerate that short-term increase in distress to benefit from that long-term decrease in anxiety. In the end, the lesson is reality is always your friend. Hmm. Isn't that crazy good? That's so interesting. And I feel like it's so true. Like I'm thinking about these moments when I've like put off something. So when I needed to invest or when I needed to start Logan's 529 or when I needed, like when these things needed to happen and it's easy to be like, I don't know if I can save enough or mm. I don't know what if I invest in the wrong thing or what if I... What if it goes down in value? What, yeah. What if it crashes I again? don't know what, what if, I'm doing. All these feelings and all these emotions and it, it's like, as I'm reading this, I'm like, is she talking about me? Yeah, absolutely. She's I talking feel. to me. <laughs> and so I think that's the big and third point that I wanted to share is you must pay attention to your feelings. Mm. You know, when, when you hearken... This is Joe Sangle's words. When you hearken to your emotional responses, it provides a window into your very soul, so to speak. I want you, as you are preparing a budget the next time, uh, podcast listeners, I want you to take some time to be quiet and, and connect with what you're feeling in that moment. As you're preparing to make your next financial decision, uh, as you receive your next payday, as you prepare to embark upon funding a dream, such as Megan and Jordan's boat, I want you to resist the urge to run away from your feelings. Instead, I want you to lean into them with a counselor or a coach if necessary, because I believe truly deeply that it is in these moments that you're going to be able to learn and grow and you'll become a much better money manager and you won't find yourself regretting making poor money decisions as much because you will make less poor decisions because you become aware of these feelings. You know, more than anything, you know, we want you to be able to live a happy, fully funded life. And that is only able to be found when you face all of your financial realities and learn about your relationship with money, why you do and what you do, and then find ways to navigate those challenges. I'll finish by just sharing that you can't make them go away. The goal should not be to make your emotions go away. The goal is to be able to deal with them in healthy ways. Yeah, I think it's understanding the emotions. So for instance, Jordan and I love to travel pre-COVID. I'm hoping that one day that comes back and we're able to continue to travel. I love to travel with COVID well, yeah, but like and proper PPE and social distancing. Internationally, we like to travel. <laughs> so our honeymoon, we went to St. Lucia. We had saved up for it. We went, we're there, we're doing these excursions. All of a sudden, we're at the end of, almost the end of our trip. And Jordan's like, our money is not in the safe anymore. Like somebody stole our money. So we're like the housekeeper, all this stuff. Sandals is like a super nice resort, mm -hmm. super like well qualified. Like, I highly recommend Sandals, but we come to realize we stole the money. Like we spent the money. Like you had it, spent all your money. We spent all of our money. It wasn't. <laughs> and this moment came over me of like, oh my gosh, we're like, we we're like, we're broke. We don't like, what are we going to do? <laughs> And it was just like, in that moment, I had to be like, okay, we're okay. This is why we have an emergency fund. This is why we like play in. This is why we, but all these things. So like understanding the emotion of like easy to like revert, revert, revert back revert. to like the, oh no, like the world's ending, but just understanding the feelings of, okay, this moment we ran out of money. We didn't really, but like understanding the emotion that came with that 
hundred percent helping in moving forward in that moment. And and that informs money behavior to this day on future vacations. We do hundred percent, and we track our spending. So on you the so you're learning from it. And yes. I will just tell everyone when I pay my bills to this day, I feel my temperature go up. I feel that anxiety. I feel impatience. My upper lip starts sweating, and I have to resist the urge to run away. Mm-hmm. I. I have to do that. And we are, God has brought us a mighty long way. So I just want you to know the goal isn't for them to go away. It's to deal with them in healthy manners. Hey, as we wrap this up, we would love to hear your thoughts on how you deal with, you know, those negative emotions. You can comment if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook, or you can just email us. We would love to hear how you successfully or unsuccessfully have navigated this. That'd be very helpful. You know, Matthew 6, 24 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I really feel like that is the great quote verse for this section, for this podcast episode number 135. Truly your heart is connected to your treasure. So let's make sure our treasure is flowing to things that we want our heart connected to. Yeah. You know, our next episode number 136 is gonna be focused on something right now relevant. Tell everybody what we're gonna talk about. Yes. So our next episode, we're going to talk about getting a tax refund and how to maximize that. So if you're getting a tax refund this year, you want to make sure that you don't blow it like you maybe have in the past. Um, We're going to be giving you some tips to ensure this money is spent the best possible way. Yeah. So make sure you don't miss that. If you're, even if you don't get a tax refund, it's going to apply to any time you get found money. And so we're going to help you maximize that 2021 tax refund. If you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to others. If you're on YouTube, click the subscribe button. That'd be the greatest honor that we would ever get. You can hit the bell and comment, say something. Do you agree with what we said? Do you disagree with what we said? We welcome both. Just leave a comment. If you're on Facebook, please do the same. And if you're listening to this on a podcast podcast platform, hey, rate it and leave a review. That allows others to be able to discover the podcast and helps us make it better for you because it is for you and we're committed to your success Hey, we'll see you next Monday for the next episode of the podcast. Until then, prosper. Do one thing that helps you move forward this week. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.